All right, welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. If you're new to the channel, essentially what I do is I, uh, I have a, a severe sickness when it comes to semi-trucks and I just, I can't get enough of them. And I'm currently in the process of rebuilding three old 1970s semis. The first is this uh, Kenworth 900A. I'm trying to do up like Smoking the Bandit. The one in the middle here is my pride and joy, my 359 Peterbilt that I dragged out of a field and I've been working on for the last, I don't know, three, three and a half years. And then the latest project is a Kenworth K100 cab over. And that's actually the truck that we're gonna be working on today. Gonna to do some, uh, some frame work and, and some other uh, fun stuff there. Frame repair, I guess. The aluminum frame on that truck is, is pretty badly cracked, but uh, I got a friend coming to help me, uh, help me fix that. So yeah, so I, uh, you know, welcome to the channel. Uh, I hope you enjoy following along as I, as I work on these trucks. For the most part, single-handedly, except for today where I'm actually gonna get some help. And I also wanted to highlight uh, the generosity of, uh, of all the fans out there. And probably my biggest fan is my mother. Uh, for those that have been watching the channel for a while know that she's been very generous when it comes to donations to help out with these projects. So I really appreciate that. Thanks, Mom. And the latest was a TV. Um, they actually upgraded to a new television. And I asked, I said, what are you going to do with the old one? And she said, well, why don't you put it in your shop? And I thought, that is a great idea. So. Now I can sit here and watch Twin Stick Garage or anything else I want to watch. And actually something that I wanted to share was uh, my favorite scene from Highballin' with uh, Jerry Reed. So this is a, a late 70s trucker flip. And it's kind of the, the uh, I'm replicating the, the movie truck with that K100. And we'll get into that later. But this is my favorite part here. So Jerry's driving, but then they zoom in and he's sitting on the doghouse there. And look how quickly he gets past the driver to make it look like he jumped out of the driver's seat. So, I don't know, I thought, uh, I thought by now, by the time he did this movie, that Jerry actually knew how to drive these trucks, but I guess not. Get in there, you silly son of a bitch! So this is gonna be the Iron Duke. This isn't gonna be uh, necessarily an exact movie replica from the highballing movie. It's just gonna be more of a tribute truck in the spirit of the Iron Duke. I am gonna paint it up the same way. It's the same size cab. We're gonna go with the same paint scheme and I'll put Iron Duke on the front there. But after that, I'm gonna kinda of put my own spin on it. And one of the things I was gonna do was, I was gonna put eight inch pipes on, the, on here with uh, the flat tops with the flappers. And as you can see, I've actually purchased some different pipes. So these are just seven inch with the elbows. And I picked these up used off Kijiji for a couple hundred bucks each. And they were just too good of a deal to pass up on. Now they're a little rough. They're not, uh, they're definitely not perfect, but they'll work until I can save my pennies up to buy the, uh, the eight inch Lincolns that I want. So I'll probably just raise them up, get some new brackets here, and then we'll just uh, get some flex pipe into a Y pipe off the turbo there. And we can at least use them to, uh, to drive the truck around. But, before this truck's gonna hit the road, we still need to do some work on the frame. Well, I still need to do some work on the frame. Uh, but again, as I was saying, I got uh, my friend Don Gratz coming over and she's gonna help weld up the cracks that were uh, near the back axle there. We'll weld those up and obviously this frame's been sandblasted, but it still needs, I need to put a lot of filler in there, make it all smooth. There's some new steel plates I need to make. And then I was thinking of priming it and painting it in a single stage kind of a metallic red. I think that'll look quite sharp. And we'll just do the suspension, the diffs, and the frame rails and the brackets, and we'll go all the way up to the radiator with that. And that'll look really sharp. And then we can start building, rebuilding the air system. I'm gonna rebuild the, uh, the torsion bars. I got a friend in New Jersey that's, that's gonna help me with that. We're gonna take, uh, gonna take these Dayton's off of here. I'm gonna convert it to uh, buds. I'm gonna steal the wheels and hubs off of Snowman and transfer those over here. We're gonna throw these away. Again, this truck's not gonna be a perfect movie replica. Everyone always comments down below, oh, the movie truck had Dayton's. Yes, I know, I don't like Dayton's. These are too small, we're gonna to go to Bud's. So 
I'm going to take those off Snowman, put them here. Conmat's actually going to be sending me some new state-of-the-art hubs for Snowman with the longer studs for an inner and outer uh, split ring rim. So that'll come in a future episode as well. But we'll just keep building this truck up just like I've done with the other ones. There's uh, going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of Saturdays, uh, a lot of disposable income, and uh, hopefully a lot of good episodes for, uh, for you to watch and, and follow along. So I'll just quickly show the cracks here. Uh, so little crack here, and I imagine it can't be that long because, uh, I mean, the welds, there's only three inches of weld there, so maybe it was only an uh, inch and a half, two inch crack. And there's one on the other side as well. But we'll just grind that out of there, weld it up, and then fish plate it in, and then drill holes for the uh, for the support bolts for the suspension. But yeah, should uh, should be interesting. I'm really uh, curious to see how this is going to turn out because this is one of the reasons I was kind of scared of getting this truck is because because of that crack. But hopefully it's not too uh, significant when we grind this out of here and uh, and we can fix it up good as new. Okay, so we got the. We got all that bubble gum ground off of there. And as you can see, indeed there is a crack. So we'll do the same to the other side and then we'll weld that up and make it good as new. Okay, so here's the other side. A lot of uh, corrosion in there, uh, that white galvanic corrosion that you usually see around there. So had to nibble this out and the crack went up to about that height there. So definitely cracked on both sides and it's gonna need a lot of fill, but can be fixed. So unfortunately something came up and Don wasn't able to come out today and weld in the cracks in those in the frame there. So I know probably a lot of you are disappointed because you wanted to see that, but I told her, I said, that's fine. It can wait for another day. Uh, there's no big hurry on this truck. I've got two other active projects going on. So she committed that when she does come out to actually weld in and fish plate those uh, cracks, she's gonna bring the gantry crane that she's built for me. So we'll set that up as well. And that'll uh, look for that in a future episode. But on a good note, the day cab company reached out to me recently and said, hey, what's your plans for uh, interior on the cab over? And I said, well, I was going to try and reuse some old panels and just try and patch together what I had because I've, I've got the old roof panels, but they're, they're cracked and they're damaged, but I was just going to try and make it work. And they said, you know what, we're actually, we're going to start manufacturing interiors for, for cab overs, which is absolutely fantastic. So. That's great news because I know a lot of viewers have been uh, reaching out saying, hey, does a day cab company do uh, interiors for my, you know, 352 or 362 Pete or K100 uh, Kenworth? And so that's, that's coming soon. They're going to actually have those available on their website. So they're just working on um, the door panels are the same, but they're going to make new panels for the, for the roof. And then, of course, the sides and the roof. And it's not that different from a conventional. It's obviously just wider. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna go with, and I, I want your opinion on this. I'm thinking since I'm gonna do a dark red um, wine, metallic wine color, dark red uh, paint on the frame, I thought a dark red interior panel in the diamond tuft, just like I did in the, um, in the Peterbilt, but uh, use white buttons. So I kind of do the, the white and red color, but but red with uh, the white buttons on the on the inside. I think that would really pop. So we do that uh, the diamond tuft on both the the bunk and the cab all the way across, and then the side panels and then the door panels as well. So I think that would look pretty sharp, and I can't wait for that to all come together. And uh, obviously put in the new dash there from Carmen. And yeah, this is going to be one heck of a one heck of a truck when it finally gets put together. So. With that, I know I didn't get a lot of work done in this episode, but I figured I did run back to, uh, to that Wreckers and picked up those parts. So I'll, uh, I'll share that now with you. And like I always say, don't ever forget, if you got it, a trucker brought it. Just here at my favorite Wreckers again to get those parts off that cab over. Look what's at the end of the road here. A Long Hood 379. We better take a closer look. Seven inch lights. Well, that's interesting. That's about. Let's grab those off of this truck. I wonder if he's selling it whole or what the deal is. Doesn't look like fire damage. Oh, look at them pedals. Cool. 
GTO. Huh. This is a good looking truck. I'm guessing from the dash, early 90s. Oh, look at that frame. That is one of the rustiest ones I've ever seen. Huh. Guy could do a cutoff on this though. Lengthen it right out. Oh, I gotta ask what they want for it. That's beautiful. If those kids could read, they'd be very upset. <laughs> A friend of mine's looking for light covers. Oh, this is a B model, so they won't be the same. Gotta go find an A or a K100. That's nice. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Snowman. How does that come off of there? Glued on. I think I could pry that off without breaking it. guy here at the wrecker was saying those hydraulic rams are stupid expensive and you can't even get them anymore from Kenworth he says even when you could get them 20 years ago they were 900 bucks each so he wants half that so I told him I'd see if there's one on this truck before we go to that aerodyne see if he's got three he said he might give me a better deal okay so the ram is here easier to take off it's just a cotter pin although it is kinked over because the whole cab's kind of uh, slid over yeah he's got a ram on each side oh no that one's broken so there's one good one okay well like i guess say maybe he'll give me a better price i think it'll be easier to take it off the aerodyne because the cab's not putting pressure on it. Okay, anything else we need in here? Well, the interior's not too bad. I don't know if I'd want blue panels, but I like the, the VIT buttons. Wouldn't really match the, the red and white Duke, though. But, oh, look, there's some instructions on how to tilt the cab yeah not too much in here that I need for the Duke let's go over and look at that aerodyne okay let's get some goodies I'm gonna get those bands gonna get those spotlights on both sides and yeah, what else do we need yeah and I'm gonna get this ram because it's already disconnected up here at the front, so I just need to unbolt it there and take the lines off. Yeah, that'll be good. I sure hope an E-RAM or a RAM off a K100E fits my old K100. I don't imagine they changed it. Looks the same. I'd almost like to get this Bosto heater out of here too. How hard is that gonna be? Yeah. Four bolts looks like. Huh, I wonder. I wonder if I should throw that on the pile too. You always seem to get a better deal at the wreckers when you when you bring more stuff up to the to the front there. Man. And these look like brand new hubs too. Hubs and the stickers are still on the drums. Conman hadn't sent me those well. The drums they sent me, or the hubs they sent me, are the newer style, and I'm going to put them on the uh, Project Snowman, but these would be a lot nicer on the on the Duke. Okay, Mark, stop dreaming, let's get to work.
Eight bags, suspension. Oh, so many goodies on this truck. So I'm just here at Edmonton Kenworth. My new seats came in. So what I did was I ordered two seats for the Duke. And uh, actually, very generous. One was uh, my wife bought me one. Mrs. Twin Six bought me one for my for my birthday and my mom bought me the other. So we got new seats for the Duke. So obviously they're not going in for a while, but uh, I wanted to grab them because I just, I like the, the exact same seat as I put in the driver's side of Snowman. And I like them so much, just that classic look. I thought they'd go really nice in, uh, in the Duke. So we'll just spin around here to shipping and receiving and throw them in the back. All right, so I got the, I got the seats home. Once again, thanks to mom and Mrs. Twin Sticks for my awesome birthday present. I'm probably gonna leave them in the box. Again, they're exactly the same as the one that are the one that I got for Project Snowman. And then the driver will have a nice seat to, to enjoy while he's going through the gears. So I'll just, I'll offload him here and we'll, uh, we'll keep him as is. Uh, it's gonna be a while before I get him into the Duke. And I uh, figure I'll sneak him in here. I'm starting to get overrun with, with parts <laughs> in the, in the second garage here i got the the interior showed up from the day cab company for project snowman and it's a good problem to have i got lots of lots of stuff that i need to uh to actually install on these trucks but maybe i'll bring that van trailer home one of these days and start storing start storing all my truck parts in there so it doesn't take over my garage but we'll get there little by little and i also wanted to let everyone know that this will actually be the last episode that you'll see for the iron duke on youtube Going forward, I'm only going to have this build posted on Patreon. So if you want to actually see it go from its current state to its finished product, you got to sign up. Now, don't worry. I'm still going to put Project Snowman little by little on the hunt, all that other fun stuff. That'll still be available on YouTube for your viewing pleasure. But if you want to watch the Duke, you got to sign up. Click the Twin Stick Garage logo to subscribe. And be sure to comment down below. I encourage you to share any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, stories, or even just a simple hello. I read and appreciate every one. And if you really want to help out the channel, head over to my Patreon, a subscription-based service that you can sign up and see videos before they're released on YouTube. I'm also going to be posting some content that you can't see anywhere else, so go check it out.